folks, today we're going to be talking about the human skull and we're going to talk about the different bones in the skull in this video. Next video we'll talk about some of the landmarks in the skull that you will want to know for our next exam. All right, some of the, some of the bones that we're going to meet are paired and others are single. So the single bones in the skull, let's do singles first, I guess. The first one that you probably already know is the mandible. Mandible, which is the movable part of the lower jaw. So that's a good way to remember it. Mandible, movable. Meh. It's crazy and weird, but that's the way that I do it. Uh, the mandible, it holds the lower teeth, which are not bones. And the mandible itself is sort of a U-shaped bone with these two vertical structures on either side. The mandible. These are called the maxilla. So there is a right and a left maxilla. Remember, whenever we've got paired bones, we have to side them, right and left. The, the side that we go with is always the side of the patient. It is never our side from our perspective, because it doesn't matter what perspective I'm looking at it. If I write to my colleague in Germany and say, hey, he had a defect on his right parietal, you'll know exactly which side I'm talking about. It doesn't matter which way we're looking at it. So it's always the patient's perspective. So right um, maxilla, left maxilla. These bones are, again, distinguished or delineated by their sutures. Here you see a suture right at the middle. It then splits at the nose. It goes up around the uh, margin of the nasal aperture. Beside the nasal bones, across here, right at the base of the frontal bone, and then down in front of the, uh, the uh, lacrimal, down and around. This is one side of the maxilla. Right maxilla, left maxilla. Okay, next we're going to move up to the probably most obvious bones, the names of which everybody already knows, the nasal bones. These two bones, there are two of them. You can see another suture right down the middle and a suture on either side. Nasal bone right, nasal bone left. Make sense? Okay. Then up to the frontal bone. The frontal bone is delineated again by sutures. We'll talk about the names of these particular sutures later in the next episode. So the frontal bone goes right along the top edge. It forms the top margin of the eye orbits goes right across this suture here. There's another suture here. And then of course, this suture back here going all the way across and around. So the frontal bone is a single bone, at least in adults. In children, it is still separated. And sometimes you will see another suture going right up the middle here. This is called a retained metopic suture. All children have them, most adults do not. Moving around, we have the parietal bones. There is a right parietal and a left parietal. These are again delineated by pretty obvious sutures going across, down around. Here's another squamosal suture and then the lambdoidal suture, which we'll learn later. Then we come to the occipital bone. Again, we see this suture separating it here. It's got all the ridges for the nuchal muscles. This actually comes all the way down and around. It incorporates the foramen magnum, which we'll learn in a minute. And then there's another suture right across the backside here. This is the occipital bone. The occipital bone. Continuing to move around the skull. Now I'll bring you around to my perspective. We're looking at it from the posterior perspective. If you look closely inside the nose, there's a bone going right up here. It has a suture right at its base. And if you look close, you'll see sort of an upside down V. The V shape, as in victory or Victoria, tells us that that is the vomer bone. The vomer creates part of what is the bony septum down the middle of the nose. That bony septum is half vomer, half ethmoid. But this part here, this is usually where we will mark the vomer bone, V-O-M-E-R. All right, moving up forward a little bit. The suture on this is very hard to see, and it often is difficult to see, but these, there's a suture down the middle here, 
and there's a little bone here and a little bone here. These are called the palatine bones. They're on the back side of the palate. The rest of the palate is part of the maxilla, this frontal, this, this upper tooth bone here. Okay? So we've got the maxilla separated again by the suture down the middle for the right and left maxillae. Then we've got the same back here, the palatine bones. Palatine bones. All right. Now we work our way around the side here. We met the parietal bone up top here, which goes from this suture down here all the way across, all the way down here to this very interesting suture here, which we'll talk about later. This is called the squamosal suture. But then we have the ear hole, and it actually connects. There's another suture right along here, which separates this bone from this bone, which we'll talk about in just a minute. This bone, which includes the ear hole, is called the temporal bone. Temporal, as in time. Temporal bone so named because somebody thought it looked kind of like an hourglass, which it sort of does and sort of doesn't. This incorporates a few of the um, bony landmar landmarks that we're going to talk about later on. Now, moving around to the front side of the face again, we're going to see several more bones in the face. These are going to be very hard to detect, at least in this. They're much easier on that sheet with the false colorization, but we'll see what we can do. The first one that you're going to see, you see this kind of curvature shape here? Well, in my mind, I imagine this as a Z. Do you guys see the Z here? This, again, is separated by that little suture here. This goes all the way up to right along here. There's another little suture right there that separates it from the maxilla. This is called the zygomatic bone or the malar bone. But more often now, nowadays, it's called the zygomatic bone. And it includes this zygomatic arch, which we'll learn about later, through which some muscles attach. The zygomatic arch is actually separated right down the middle here. And part of it comes from the temporal bone, which is this bone here. And then it joins up right there in the middle. And then the rest of it goes to the zygomatic bone. All right. Okay, for the next few bones that we're going to talk about, I brought out a different skull. This one will come apart, which will clarify a lot of things. First of all, let's get rid of the mandible. Okay. Now, as we're looking at this skull, and I've removed the vomer as well, <clears throat> now we want to look inside the eye orbit, and we'll see some separation here. This will be a lot more clearly, clear when I uh, pull these things out. Where did my pointer go? Grab my pointer. First of all, let's look at the nasal bones. These are clearly separated right down the middle by these sutures. The right and left nasal bones. Then as we go to the inside, you guys will see, and this is where we'll usually mark it, this kind of, um, this kind of rectangular shaped bone is the ethmoid bone. It's found inside the eye orbit toward the nose right there. It is behind another bone with a hole going right down through the middle. That is where your tear duct goes. This is called the lacrimal bone. So we've got the lacrimal and the ethmoid bone. Let me separate this and show you. So with the face off, now we can see right here in the middle of the nose is this bone with all kinds of little pieces to it. This on the lower half is the vomer bone, which we met before. It's got that V shape on the back side. If you guys look very carefully, Let's see if I can get my hand. There we go. See that V-shape? I've now removed it to show you the ethmoid bone. The ethmoid bone is a very light, airy, and extremely fragile bone in life. This one has magnets on it, which obviously aren't there in real life. And these, these are actually, these pegs are to put it back in. But this bone, loaded with little plates and little holes in the top and some other features that we're actually not going to learn about today. All right, that is the ethmoid bone. Now, in behind that, you'll see there's this bone that starts out on this side of the skull 
it is a single bone. It goes all the way across, including all of these items here, all the way across to here. I'm going to pull the frontal off, and you'll be able to see it even more clearly. This bone going across right here. Let me pull it out to be on its own here. Now you guys can clearly see this funny, odd-shaped bone. It kind of acts like a linchpin to hold the entire skull together. You can see it sort of slides right into here, holding either side of the skull together, if I can tuck that in. And then it also holds the base of the frontal in place. It acts as kind of a, a connector for the whole thing. That bone is called the sphenoid bone. And the easy way to remember that is the skull is kind of a sphere. So the sphenoid, which is this kind of bat-shaped bone, the sphenoid holds the sphere together. Sphenoid bone. All right. Incidentally, just for clarity, I'm going to show you one of the lacrimal bones to separate it by itself. Here's the lacrimal bone, and you can see down the middle there is sort of this, this tear duct that goes right down there. That tear duct is actually just that. It's kind of a gutter. Your tears are formed on the upper outside of your eye, and they wash across your eye and then go out through that duct, which communicates with the nose, and then down the back of your throat. That's why when you're crying, you snot a lot. Okay, now for the final two bones in the skull that we haven't really seen yet, or we did see, but I didn't point them out, is the lower or inferior nasal conche. That, uh, that's these things. I'm pointing one out here. This is the right. This is the left. So let me bring that other skull over here so that you can see it more clearly. I'm going to pull the, the facial, facial bones off. Here we go. Now, if we turn this around, you can see inside there are two separate bones right in here. Here's one, here's the other. So those bones down here in the base of the nose are the inferior nasal conche, which there are two. Okay. So that's it. That's the 22 bones of the skull that we're going to meet. There are 28 altogether. Okay.